talking of HMRC inquiries, um, so Yogesh has just put a question in there and, and it, there was something further up in the chat as well. Uh, so when an inquiry happens, do you know, there's probably a few things we can talk about around here, around this topic. So, you know, how often realistically does this issue come up of an inquiry taking place? Um, you know, do they have the right to ask anything? So if you refuse to answer something, can they push you on that? Um, and, and anything we need to be aware of, should we find that we're in that situation where we're having to deal with the HMRC? So um, I can answer that and in, in, in one of the other questions at the same time. Um, one of the questions was, yeah. can I buy fee protection insurance? So that means that you can insure yourself for an HMRC inquiry. And we as a firm offer that. So that means that it's like any other insurance. Um, if you want to take it out, we offer it to clients. And that means that if there is an HMRC inquiry, all the costs of dealing with that, our professional fees in dealing with it are covered. And some of these inquiries, I had one in covid and we went through five different inspectors and because the inspectors were being moved to go on to other cases. So some of these can drag on for four or five years. So as long as you've got fee protection insurance before the HMRC raised an inquiry, then you should be covered as long as it's um, as part of the insurance plan. With regards to inquiries, I personally think it's going to be, there's going to be more of them. And the reason I think that is because um, Rachel Reeves and Jeremy Hunt have both said that they're going to um, give more money to HMRC. Um, and that means that if there's more money, they're going to raise more inquiries. Now, HMRC have this software called Connect, and um, it's uh, set up by BAE Systems, and um, it's basically like spider software. So what is um, something that's relevant at the moment is people sometimes buy properties, rent them out, and never declare the rental income. So what the Spider software says is that, say I own 7 Let's Be Avenue, they can have a look to find out that there's a virgin phone at 7 Let's Be Avenue in the name of Mr. Smith. They can find that there's a gas bill in there in the name of Mr. Smith. They can find that there is... Um, a sky dish in there in the name of Mr. Smith, Smith. So suddenly they would write to me and say, Mr. Wilkins, and they'd know it's me because when I buy a property now, my national insurance number has to go on the purchase of the property so they can link the national insurance number with the owner of the property. So they say, Mr. Wilkins, I think that you haven't declared the rental income on 7 Latsby Avenue because Mr. Smith lives there. So what people have done in the past is tried to not declare that rental income and spider software enables them to put this together. And I was reading about one guy in Leeds that was um, not declaring his income. He was making, he was selling stuff on eBay and he had something like seven different phone numbers, six different email addresses, et cetera, et cetera. But this software links the whole lot back to him and proved that he was running a trading business through eBay that he never declared. So if people go down that route, that's just fraud and, and they should be declaring as they go along. All our clients have is um, there could be a random inquiry, HMRC pick you up for a random inquiry, or there could be um, uh, an aspect inquiry. So it may be where they look and suddenly your accounts have shown um, motor expenses of £5,000 a year. One year it goes up to £25,000. And they'll send you a letter and say, well, why is it £25,000 when all the previous year has been £5,000? So then they could just pick up on things like that. Or your name could just come out of the hat and they ask questions. So, But these things do drag on a long time. So you want to make sure that if something like that does happen, that your accountant knows how to deal with it. And there are time limits for HMRC raising inquiries. So if they're outside the time limits, your accountant needs to know whether he he should deal with it or not. If it's outside the time limit, then he writes back to HMRC, say, sorry, you're too late to ask the questions. But the point is they should know if they are an expert in dealing with HMRC inquiries, what questions to answer, what not to, or to answer and how to answer them. So what you don't want to do is give them so much rope, you hang yourself and then you make your, your problem a lot worse. 